Hello, Henry from Belgium here. Today, a video about Legoset 6493, flying time vessel from 1996. I found this set by chance on one of my many trips to the flea market. To be honest, I didn't know the set and the theme, but somehow the box attracted me and that's why I bought it. I have already done some research and the set has the theme time cruisers. That theme consists of four small sets and three large ones. This flying time vessel is the third largest and has 257 pieces and two minifigures. This is how I have found the set, all bricks thrown together in the box. I am curious to discover the parts and I'm going to sort everything first. I see parts of a boat, and also many gray parts. Some yellow parts, and quite a few black bricks. Finally, I have a box here with what I call the more special parts. The minifigs are in here too. I will discuss all these parts throughout the building process, but I'm going to take a closer look at the box first. It still looks good for its 28 years, all cardboard is still present and the drawings are still clearly visible. Here I see images of other sets from the same theme with the set number included. I have never seen that depicted on a box before. The vessel is depicted in a different way on the back. On the inside of the box, there is some kind of extra thin cardboard that covers the set. This was attached here at the top with tape by the previous owner, but it should actually be loose. I noticed that the box is quite large in relation to the number of parts, but that's always a good marketing trick. Inside this inner box, there was originally extra cardboard that was divided into compartments and where the large boat parts were the eye catchers. Around it, the parts were into the compartments in plastic bags. And finally on top, there was a plastic lid that contained special parts. When you opened the cover when you were in the store, you were stimulated to buy the set. Here you can see photos of the original packaging. It's a beautiful box with creative artwork, and it invites you to play. The only sad thing about this for me is that there are no images that suggest how to build the set in a different way. The manual also still looks very good and, above all, very comprehensive. Lots of steps and nice drawings. I have to say that during my research, I came across several negative reviews about this set and the theme. But I will give it a fair chance to build, describe, and comment on it without prejudice. I already have the impression that there is a lot to do and there are many different components, so that seems positive to me. So. Let's get started. The first thing I build is a mechanism that will make elements move. It consists of Lego Technic parts and a red elastic band. It is important that you have the original one and not an ordinary elastic, because the original has a certain thickness and size, which is important for the proper functioning of the mechanism. I attach it under the two large boat parts. Cool to see these parts, they are new to me. There are a number of nice references to another theme or sub-theme, for example, these are parts from the Dragon Knights, and not just the front legs of the dragon, but the wings as well. A horse mask and flames also appear in that castle sub-theme. At the back of the boat, I attach some kind of rudder that also has to be connected to the previous mechanism. 
Ultimately, the system will move the wings and rear axle as the ship moves forward. With these boat parts, the designers refer to the popular pirate theme that has similar hull parts, such as in the Caribbean Clipper or the Black Sea's Barracuda set. But here, it only concerns a front and back piece, and the color is not brown, but dark gray. Cool that these version of hulls are also in my collection now. I have completed the first 15 steps of the manual, and I have formed the basis of the vessel. But the construction process is not over yet, and there is still a lot to do. I am now building a kind of transparent storage case that will contain headgear from different themes such as pirates, castle, and space. If you fly to a different time zone, you may have the right headgear at hand. This also includes a construction with a screw and dragon wings, which I also connect via a special rubber elastic. Here you can see the different headgear. Nice that there are so many. They fit in the box, but I find it a bit clumsy and it breaks easily. I would have liked to see a sturdier construction here, possibly with a handle or lever that would make it easier to open and close the whole thing. In addition to the headgear, there are also some accessories included, which you can store in a box. The box fits in the middle here, and the positive thing is that by putting it in that place, you hide the radar work of the mechanism, and so it is a nicer finish as a whole. The cockpit is also a fun part to build because it consists of a lot of different parts and components that I haven't seen before. The yellow periscope is a beautiful eye-catcher. I can place it on these hinges so you can easily open and close the cockpit. A negative point for me here is that the interior is very soberly finished. I would expect many more buttons, navigation, and levers here, especially for a high-tech time vessel. At least two additional bricks with print would have been nice. I will further finish the vessel with some nice accents and of course also the mast and associated parts. The wheels consist of different pieces and must be put together in the right place because they have to be connected to the wings, which I will build last. So the design is actually cleverly put together and there is a well thought out construction behind it. That's good. It takes some puzzling and searching, and it has to be put together exactly as the manual indicates. Or, the end result will not function properly. That makes the building experience challenging, and I like that. After an hour, I have a beautiful result, about which I will give my opinion in a moment. But first, I will show you the minifigs. And there is even a monkey in the set. The minifigs have names. The boy's name is Timmy. That's also why the capital letter T is printed on his torso. And the other minifig is Dr. Cyber. 
two beautiful minifigures, colorful with a nice print. Glad I have this in my collection now, and here you see them together with the end result. As you can see, the wings and radar at the back move when you drive the vessel. That is a very nice play feature. During the construction process, I have already given my opinion on some elements, but what strikes me now is that the top part of the mast is very high. It could have been a bit shorter for me. Because this way you expect that a flag should be attached to it somehow, but that's not the case. I also noticed that the brick in the cockpit is the only one with a print, and there are no stickers at all. I think extra prints or stickers could have given the set a more personalized touch. I am a fan of the dark gray and black. It also radiates uniformity and a kind of maturity. Many colors would have made it too childish, so I personally think the color scheme is nice, and the color accents that have been chosen are subtle and good. So I actually think it's a nice set, and I had fun building and puzzling. The game element works well and has been well thought out. The few downsides I listed may also have to do with budget costs, and we do not always know what choices the designers had to make. I won't specifically look for the other sets within this sub-theme, but if I find them somewhere at a good price, I will buy them anyway. I find the theme imaginative, yet fun, and the set will have a place in my collection. Feel free to comment below the video, and don't forget to subscribe, it's free! Thanks for watching and see you in the next video.